Okay, that is good. So, today we are starting part three of the six speed electric dirt bike projects. Now, if you guys haven't seen part one or two yet, definitely go check those out so you guys have a good idea on what I'm doing and why. Now, first thing that we need to do is we need to machine the other gear we need, the one that's going to be going in between the electric motor and the clutch baskets. And then once we get that done, we need to heat treat these parts so therefore we can get them in place and finalize and all that kind of stuff. Now, while I'm machining the, the, the gear, I'll also be heat treating the test pieces and doing all the kind of testing. I need to do to be able to figure out the best way to heat treat these parts, so hopefully they'll last a good long while. Close enough. So, while I'm machining the other gear we need, I'm just about ready to start cutting the teeth on that thing. We also need to start working on heat treat testing and case hardened testing the steel that we're using. Now, this is what's left of the steel chunk I used. I cut that chunk into slices, cut those slices into strips, 
and put three strips each into these steel containers yesterday and then filled them up with uh, charcoal, a little, which I mixed a little bit of this stuff in. This is sodium carbonate. Uh, mixed 5% uh, by weight of this stuff into the charcoal so therefore the charcoal can heat up and not burn off. And then I sealed these containers off using this stuff, which is refractory concrete. This can withstand up to uh, three, over 3,000 degrees Fahrenheit, which is good because we need to heat these up to 1,700 degrees Fahrenheit and leave them in the oven for an unknown amount of time. That's why there's three of them. We're basically just trying to figure out how long do we need to leave these in the oven for to allow the carbon in the charcoal to absorb into the steel? That's basically what a uh, case hardening is. It's heating up steel surrounded by a carbon source. That carbon source is charcoal and the carbon in the charcoal gets absorbed into the steel. So therefore, once you actually harden these parts, they can harden properly because you need a high carbon content in a steel part to be able to heat treat them properly. So that's basically what uh, case hardening is. So now these are marked one, two, and three. The steel pieces in there are also marked one, two, and three. So therefore we can identify each one from, you know, the other when we're done with this. And I will put these in the oven and leave the first one in for 45 minutes, the second one in for an hour, third one for an hour and a half, and then we'll let them cool down and then bust these open. I'll heat them up again and then harden them in oil, cooking oil, motor oil, as well as water to try and figure out the best liquid to use to uh, harden this kind of stuff. So basically we're just trying to figure out how to do this properly before heat treating the real steel parts, the real gears that we need to harden. So by the way, this is not a how-to tutorial on how to do this stuff. This is basically just me experimenting and just following a bunch of videos I found on YouTube, following what they're doing, but some videos are contradicting other videos. So I'm just trying all the information that I found and trying to figure out the best way to do this stuff. So therefore, once we're ready to heat treat the real parts, we kind of have an idea on how to do this properly. Now, to heat these parts up, I bought this kiln on Amazon. I was kind of wanting to do this outside because it, this thing kind of stinks, but it's drizzling on and off, so let's just do it inside. Hopefully it's big enough to fit all these in here. So, the, mo the one that's marked three, we're gonna put in the back, because that's the one that we're gonna leave in for the longest. The one marked two, let's put it right here. First one, the one that's marked one, goes right in front. Just like that. Yeah. Barely enough room in there. I'm probably gonna let this thing slowly get up to temperature. First, let's set it at 200. All right, so it's been at 800 degrees for a little bit. I kind of just want to just check up on it. I just want to make sure the plaster isn't cracking or anything. So, so far it looks good. Yeah, you can see those coils getting hot. So, looks good. Let's crank the temperature up. So, it's finally at 1700 degrees, and there is a legit flame coming out of the top. I guess it's better than smoking like crazy, but yeah, is it supposed to be on fire? By the way, these cords are warm. The cord right here and here, it's warm? That's not good. So, it's been 45 minutes that this thing has been at full temperature, so let's pull out the first one. Luckily, that horrible stench went away and it stops burning, so. Oh, wow, that's hot. I gotta be really careful to not touch the steel coils. Okay, just put it down right there. And close it back up. All right, so on the second one, it kind of looked like the casing pulled apart a little bit. And that may have been what was burning at the top. It may have just been the charcoal burning, so... Alright, we'll let that cool down. Alright, it's been another half hour, so... Let's pull out the next one. Wow, it's hot in there. There it goes. Why does it get stuck? Now I just leave the last one for, let's do another half hour. 
Another half hour later, so the last one is done. Wow, it almost fell over. I'm just gonna pull the whole thing out. Okay, close this up and let me turn it down to zero. Wow, that's hot. So before we open these up, let's first finish machining the gear. Perfect. That is the last tooth. We are done cutting teeth. So, I let these parts cool down overnight. This one is marked one. This one is marked two. 
and this one is three. So this one was in the oven for 45 minutes, hour and 15, and hour and 45. I decided to do, you know, a little bit longer of the times I was thinking about doing, just to give it a broader idea on, you know, times. So let's open these things up and see what we got. Let's do the the three, the hour and 45 minutes one. Also, you can see on some of these cases how the sides kind of like opened up a little bit. So some of the, you know, it wasn't a perfect seal, but hopefully this worked. You can actually hear a difference. So these are still relatively soft, which is good because this wouldn't have hardened them. All we're doing is introducing carbon, so therefore we can harden these properly. Now, the next step is we need to actually harden them. And the reason there are three each is because one from each pile, I'm gonna be quenching in water. The other ones from each pile, I'm gonna be quenching in linseed oil. And then the last three from each pile, I'm gonna be quenching in motor oil and then we'll snap them all in half, compare the grain structures, compare the hardness and toughness and all that kind of stuff to just determine the best way to harden this kind of steel. Now, actually, before we start heat treating these, we need to start working on making the metal boxes that these are gonna go into, filling them with charcoal and sealing them off because the sealing that I use, which is the mortar, takes at least 24 hours to dry, so let's actually do that first. So by the time we're done with this, testing all this stuff and we figured out how to do this properly, the mortar for sealing these off should be cured, so therefore we can go ahead and hard case harden these and then heat treat them. So like I said, we need to mix 5% by weight of this stuff into the charcoal. So, should be wearing a mask. I'm also gonna be putting in another piece of the same steel in here just so we can harden both of them, case harden both of them, and we'll be able to test this one without having to dent or scratch this. All right, now I just have to let that cure for at least 24 hours. So not only did I mark these one, two, and three, but I also marked them A, B, and O, so therefore I can identify not only the times that I case harden them, but also the, the oil or water that I'm using to harden this stuff. So A is going to be quenched in vegetable oil, B is going to be quenched in oil, and O is gonna be quenched in water. So this one is 1B. You can kinda of see the markings on there, but yeah, so this is just a good way to identify 
once we're done with this, you know, which one's which and how long did I case harden it. So I'm going to do this one at a time. First I'm going to do the vegetable oil, then I'm going to do the motor oil, then I'm going to do the water, let them all cool down, clean them up, and then we'll test them. I tried Googling what kind of motor oil, and of course Google is extremely vague, and it just says motor oil, so I'm assuming that's any oil? I don't know. Hopefully these containers don't leak. Alright, let's put these in the oven. Alright, so it's been soaking for 10 minutes at 1450 degrees Fahrenheit. So, ooh, it's hot. So first thing, I need to verify that they are non-magnetic anymore. Yep. All right, they didn't catch fire. That's a good thing. So let's put in the next ones. Next, let's do vegetable oil. Vegetable oil is A. So let's put in A. Same as last time, soaking for 10 minutes. Let's verify that they're non-magnetic. Yep. All right, let's put the last ones in. All right, that's all of them. So we now have our test pieces and check this out. So yeah, a file just skates right over it. So these are definitely, definitely nice and hard. Ooh, this one's even harder. Check the water. Tad bit soft. So, now, we just have to figure out how we're going to be snapping these in half to judge how strong they are, how ten the tensile strength, as well as we can uh, inspect the grain structure and all that kind of stuff. So, I'm going to try to bend these in the bench vise, but if I can't do it, because these are kind of big, I'm going to just put them in the press. Ugh. Am I even going to be able to do this? <laughs> uh, okay, yeah, so I, I don't want to hit it with a hammer because then the other half is just going to go flying and I may not be able to find it, so... Alright, hopefully this works. I'll also be recording how many pumps it takes to snap it, so... Hopefully this works, and hopefully it doesn't, you know, be too violent when it snaps. I'm not gonna wanna be near it. One. Two pumps! I know that counting the amount of pumps it takes isn't really super accurate because these are different thicknesses, but I still think it's interesting data. Oh wow, this moved. There we go. <laughs> Two. All right, let's examine the data. So, what did all this tell us, all this testing? Um, as far as hardness, uh, the the one that I quenched in water is not as hard as the ones that I quenched in motor oil or vegetable oil, because I can actually scratch this with a file and remove a little bit of material. So I think water quenching is not great for this kind of steel. As far as brittleness, I was a little concerned that, uh, you know, once I put these in the press, they were kind of really easy to snap in half, so I was a little concerned, like, maybe they're too brittle. But I grabbed one of the gears I pulled out of a riding lawnmower transmission, and I snapped that in half, and even though this is a more material that I had to snap, it was almost identical with how much force it took to snap this. So I think as far as brittleness, I think it's fine. I also did a spark test on one of these parts and the gear, 
and the sparks are pretty much identical, which is awesome. So as far as car as uh, carbon content is concerned, I think these are pretty much identical, which is good. So, but the one no what the one thing I did notice is the case hardening. The one that I left in the oven for 45 minutes has a really thin layer. The one that I left in the oven for an hour and 15 minutes it has a slightly thicker layer obviously, and the, but the one that I left in for an hour and 45 has a layer that is almost identical to the one that was in the oven for an hour and 15 minutes. So I think, it, I think as far as case hardening for this material, I think an hour and 15 minutes is pretty much good, and it made it to where there's a layer that is around 30 thou thick. So I think that's pretty good for the gear teeth that we are using. So now that I have a little bit better idea on what I'm doing and how to do it properly, tomorrow when the plaster that we use to seal off those containers that we put the actual parts that we need to harden, once that cures properly, I'll put them in the oven, I'll leave them in the oven for an hour and 15 minutes, and then I'll let them uh, cool down, heat them back up, and then quench them in vegetable oil because as far as hardness, vegetable oil and motor oil are pretty much identical, but the motor oil did leave a hard scale parts are a little bit dirtier in motor oil and vegetable oil. The parts are a little bit cleaner and I was able to uh, clean these just a little bit easier. So I think vegetable oil is the winner. Hour and 15. I now know a little bit more about what I'm doing. So therefore, by the time we are ready to heat treat the real parts, I can hopefully do it properly. So I wasn't sure if both of these would fit, but yeah, look at that. Both fit in there perfectly. So. That'll definitely save us some time. Now, like before, I'm gonna let this slowly get up to temperature, and then once it's, once, it, once it's at full temperature, then I will start the timer. All right, so I let them sit at full temperature for about an hour and 20 minutes, and then I shut it off, and it's been over an hour, and it's still at 700 degrees. So I'm just gonna, let them, I'm just gonna pull them out. Yeah, case hardening takes forever, and I'm kind of impatient. How do I get these out? Oh. There we go. So, yesterday was not very productive. We spent an entire day yesterday just trying to case harden these things. We had to, we had to wait a lot of hours for the plaster to harden properly. And then it took forever to, you know, let these things cool down. So I just decided to, you know, save it for t today. So let's finally open these things up. Then we can clean them and then heat treat them. And then we can move on with heat treating parts. soaking in there for about 10 minutes at full temperature, so here goes nothing. Don't mess this up. Let me just quickly verify it's not magnetized anymore. It's good. Here we go. Alright, let me put in the next one. All right, it's been another 10 minutes. Most of this video has kind of just been waiting around, waiting for stuff to heat up and cool down. Got to verify it's non-magnetic. Ooh, ooh, that's totally magnetic still. Let's put that back in the oven. So for those who don't know why I'm checking it with a magnet is steel should, be, before quenching a steel part, you need to make sure that it's at the proper temperature. And how you do that is the steel at the proper temperature will no longer be magnetic. That's why you check it with a magnet. If it's no longer magnetic, then it is at the proper temperature where you can quench it 
and harden it properly. And for some reason, even though this has been in the oven for 10 minutes, it was still magnetic. So, I, so I'm going to leave it in there for another five, pull it back out, check it again, and if it's still slightly magnetic, then I'll raise the temperature. All right, so it's been another five minutes. I went ahead and just raised the temperature anyways. So, because I think it's just not high enough temperature because it is on the bottom of the kiln so heat rises oh wow that's yeah okay that is good so these test pieces that I put in the uh, boxes for case hardening in with these parts. I'm also just going to harden these just so these therefore we can kind of test the case hardening without damaging these. So let me put these in here. So I kind of had a feeling that this could happen. So this shrunk by about two or three thou. So now the bearings kind of don't really fit on here. But I think I can, I think I can fix this. Well, there goes the Sandpaper. Where'd it go? Here it is. Well, that didn't last long. Nice. Do I have another one? So here's the real test. I don't want to damage these, but I do need to figure out if they if they are actually hard. So nice. Yeah, definitely sounds like it's working. I mean, the the file isn't doing anything. Yeah, the file's just skating right off. Nice. So it seems like it worked. I mean, they're definitely harder. It's just, I'm wondering, did we do it properly? Are they hard enough? Are they too hard? Is the layer too thick? Is it too thin? Only time will tell if these are actually strong enough. Now, one thing I kind of want to say is I'm, I'm really hoping that once this thing is done, I'm hoping that I'm not afraid of this thing. What I mean by that is due to just the amount of effort I spent modifying this thing and how much time I spent on this, I hope that once this thing is done, I'm not afraid 
to see what this thing can do, to ride it hard, to bang through the gears, dump the clutch, all that kind of stuff, in fear of breaking something, breaking teeth on the gears we made, breaking the transmission, breaking something out. Cause you do have to think, so, so this was a CR, not a CR, a 125cc two-stroke dirt bike engine. Two strokes are not known for their high torque, but electric motors are. I almost want to say we are possibly tripling the torque that goes into this transmission on this thing. So is the transmission strong enough? I really hope so. Are the gears we made strong enough? I hope so. Are my welds strong enough on this thing? Again, I hope so. But I just I hope that once this thing's done, I can just drive. You know, not uh, I can ride this thing, have fun with it, and not be worried that I'm gonna break something on this. So, but only time will tell if this thing will hold up. But yeah. I'm excited for this thing. I think I think this is going to be my best electric dirt bike yet. So anyway, next video we get to finalize the exact position of this gear. We need to figure out exactly where it needs to go and then drill the hole. I do need to figure out how much backlash to put in these gears because you don't want to just mash the gears together because then when they, you know, you do need to allow for a little bit of clearance for the oil and for expansion and all that kind of stuff. So we just need to figure out how much backlash to put in these things. Then we can drill the hole and everything. Then we can also uh, modify the other engine case that goes over the clutch basket and extend it all over in, he in here. And then once we do that, then we can start uh, reassembling this thing and putting it back in the dirt bike frame. But uh, guess that's it for this video. Thank you all for watching. I'll see you uh, in the next video. Charcoal doesn't burn in there. You don't want the turco burning, you just want it to get hot and then, uh, because what we're trying to do, okay, is for the, who those, uh, yeah, this is going to be hard. Film this. Compare all three of them and see, and you can, yeah, and we're actually going to be able to see, you know, the, with the different, uh, uh, I'm not good at, uh, I'm not good at explaining stuff. Practicing it. And you, then you harden them and then you are able to, and then you're, then, ah, uh, this is hard to explain, and, yeah, hopefully the oven will, and, you know, just try to, I cut the steel into slices, cut those slice, slices into strips, and put, uh, the, uh, the, the cut the, Ah, I'm tongue tied. We are surrounding these steel parts in carbon, uh, sorry, char, uh, basically it is carbon, it's, it's, char it's charcoal, it's, uh, it's, uh. now, I took, uh, now, I took three each of these metal strips, put, uh, put, uh, mm -hmm. The steel that we're using to be able to harden this, this, these steel. Blah, blah, blah. Really? This, uh, took charcoal, uh, charcoal lumps. I broke them up, which I cru- I took, uh, lumps of actual charcoal. I bunched, I, uh, <clears throat> I took lumps of charcoal, crushed them up, which was really messy and then made uh, just a bunch of charcoal that's... Yeah. Saying charcoal too much. So, I've always watched the YouTube channel Click Spring, and I've always seen anytime he needs to heat up a part to harden it, he always covers it in this slurry that helps protect the part from oxidizing. And I've always wondered what that stuff was, and I eventually found one of his videos where he says what it is. It's this stuff. It's boric acid and denatured alcohol. Now. So this stuff is highly flammable, and I'm honestly not really sure how well this oven's gonna be able to take having fire on the inside. I know it can take the heat. It's just, is there gonna be a giant flame coming out of the top of the vent hole? Or is, yeah, flammable liquid and vapor. So, hopefully, yeah, hopefully this is not a stupid idea. Hopefully this works. I'm gonna light this on fire now, and then put it in because we don't want to put this in and let it get up to temperature and have it start smoking, and then all of a sudden it ignites and just goes whoosh, blows the door open. 
chaos everywhere. We don't want that, so... That was nothing. That was way more tame than I thought it was going to be. Okay. Is this a bad idea? <laughs> is, this, is this a bad idea? Uh, Cause then the flame goes out when I put, so I don't want it to be smoking in here. As soon as I close the door, it just, it smokes like crazy. Is this a bad idea? I think this, whoa. I think this is a bad idea. I'm bored, I'm bored. Abort! Don't do this! Get this thing out of there. Okay. So I think there's a reason that you're supposed to do this in a propane forge. Propane will just burn off the gases. And this, yeah, it now stinks in here and it's really smoky so I gotta let it air out. Alright, let's pretend like that never happened.